Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Tuesday, October the 13th of 2020. This evening we begin with a reading from Eugene Peterson's God's Message for Each New Day. The recurrent error of our technologically conditioned age is to look for what's wrong in our lives so that we can fix it, or what needs doing so that we can have something worthwhile to do. There are things wrong that need fixing, and there are things that need doing, but the Christian life starts at the other end, not with us, but with God. What is God doing that I can respond to? How is God expressing his love and grace so that I can live appreciatively and in obedience? Our opening prayer this evening is the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, who has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. The Lord has showed strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this evening is from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the sun over God's house. And we are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. And from Romans chapter five, verses one to five. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts, through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This evening, I would again like to share with you words from my friend and colleague, the Reverend David Burkers. These are reflections that he, he sent out a couple of weeks ago in his daily words of comfort. Have you ever had to do something you didn't like and been told that doing it builds character? This is usually something that we loathe doing, like shoveling snow or doing homework or washing the dishes. And of course, a lot of these things, these character building exercises, occurred when we were younger. As we age, we gather a wealth of character and often look forward to new challenges and opportunities to build character. We don't have a dishwasher. Well, that's not completely true. I am the dishwasher, not some machine. 
I actually enjoy washing dishes now, but when I was younger, not really. It is important for us to look at challenges that we face as growth opportunities for use, useful skills, both physically and spiritually. I have told you of some of my projects, things that I have attempted during this pandemic, like refinishing a floor. But I have also had the opportunity to learn through my job at the library a lot of information and ways to help homeless people who use the library. This has allowed me to react with grace and peace when before I may have been governed by rules. I'm finding that this pandemic has raised everyone's stress level, whether we realize it or not. And we find ourselves reacting in ways that are out of character. Our passage from Romans talks about this, and we need to ask God to help us to persevere as we endure this time of deep character building. This brings us hope, a hope that we will be stronger in our relationship with God and with others, a hope that we will one day see life return to a less stressful sort of normal, hope that we will be able to gather and rejoice together whether we are near or far. Until then, we need to persevere together. Amen. Our prayer this evening comes from the Book of Common Order from the Church of Scotland. Let us pray. Let us acknowledge the company in which we meet, the church on earth and in heaven, the faithful who worshiped here before us, the hundreds of thousands of every place and language who on the Lord's day seek to set their lives within the atmosphere of renewing grace. As we think of them, let us take deliberate encouragement from our unity with them all. Let us acknowledge that all around the world people pray for us, and without embarrassment, let us take heart from the knowledge that we pray for one another here, seeking not only our own peace, but the peace of our brothers and sisters. Let us cast our minds over the week that has gone, with its ups and downs, its kindnesses and faithful goodness, its mixture of the regular and the surprising. If there were moments of great happiness or great sadness or both, let us seek to bring them all to the th strengthening comfort and healing mercy of the Lord and ask him to confirm whatever is good and useful in our experience and to transform or purge the things that are harmful and wrong. As we are assured of God's renewing mercy and liberating grace, and know that we are accepted in his love, let us live the lives of forgiven people, transmitting the grace which comes to us and extending to others the love which is shown to us. As the creator of all things deals with us with the patience and good humor of a loving parent, let us seek to be given the imagination and opportunity to deal similarly with our neighbors. As by his generosity we are made confidence that we belong in our Father's house and our Father's world, let us serve as channels of that hospitality, ministers of that acceptance, angels and agents of that deep sense of liberated belonging. These thoughts and desires we offer in the name and spirit of Jesus Christ, in whom the holiest in the height touched our hearts and shared our joys and sorrows, our circumstances and our hope. Amen. Friends, as we bring this day to a close, let us remember that we are indeed blessed by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Good night.